Thank you, Jeffrey. Wayne McCurry from RMB Asset Management is with us in the studio. June last year, Anglo-American, 556 rand a share. Mm. Today, 153 rand. And that is supposed to be a blue chip. A blue chip's the definition blues, yeah. is you never ever pass your dividend. Today, they're not paying a dividend. Yeah. Look, Cynthia got Carroll's got to go, surely. Surely uh, shareholders you, you will say would, she's you would, made a disaster. You yeah. would think that there's big pressure there. I mean, you would think so. They, the debt is sitting at 11 billion. They've just got, they haven't got a strong enough balance sheet to, to ride out the downturn. They've cut the capex and now they've cut the dividend. And it's quite interesting. In February this year, the difference between Anglo-American and BHP share price, Anglo's was worth 275 rand a share more than BHP. Now today, BHP's share price is higher than Anglo's. Interesting. Well, we have got a, a quite a long interview a little later with Peter Major, yes. market commentator on that. He's one of the experts on the mining sector, and he is not amused. I suppose no angry no shareholder is. is amused. You can see it in the share price. And if you're driving a Saab car, you won't be amused either. It looks like that's amused. going into liquidation yeah. as well. Ford's going to sell that. It's going to go GM. into GM's mm -hmm. going to sell that. Sorry, and it's going to go into liquidation. And they're not the first, and they won't be the last. I mean, we all know that if uh, GM and Chrysler didn't get the bailout, they would also be in liquidation. Unfortunately, there are always casualties in a, in, a, in, in a downturn, and you'd see the true caliber of a company coming through. It's not how they cope in the good times, it's how they cope mm -hmm. in the bad times. So the Swedish it's government easy. is not doing an Obama on this one. They yeah. are not going to bail out. It's time. easy to be a genius in a bull market. You know, It's not that easy in a bear market. So true, Wayne. The, uh, talking about a bear market, we were down by 3% yes, in the SACC, but poor. financials were hit hard. We were hammered. I mean, the banks were down 5%, Standard Bank down 5 First Rand down 6 so they were hammered. Now, for the first time in many a year, the dividend yield on banking shares is higher than the after-tax deposit rate you'll get putting money into the bank. So right now, in theory, if banks don't cut their dividend, and judging from what Standard Bank said today, they're not going to cut the dividend. I mean, earnings down 5%. They're not going to do an Anglo-American. They won't Anglo -American. do an Anglo-American. Uh -huh. That it now, for the first time, it actually you get a better yield buying the bank share than putting your money in the bank as a deposit if you take tax into account. How often does that happen? Alec, I went back. I don't think it has happened before. Mm. It's come close a couple of times. And remember, interest rates in SA are not going up. They're going down. Let's say another 2%. And in that case, then your dividend yield will be, you know, healthier, much higher than your after-tax yield on a deposit. So no matter how gloomy things look, at a time, there is a price this which is you need the, to start buying. This is the absolute classic value investing. You're getting companies at, banks in particular we're talking about, at absolute rock-bottom prices. I mean, literally the first time I can find where, the dividend yield is higher than the after-tax cash deposit yield, let alone the long bond rate or anything, the cash deposit, and that's coming down further. However, I want to stress, with a market like this, the mere fact that the banks might be value is not going to stop them from falling. It usually overshoots in the downside as well. well so maybe, and, maybe, and maybe we're there now. But just judging from what I've seen sort of this year, this market's got the bit between its, tith, its teeth on the downside, mm -hmm. and there just seems to be no respite. There is one good thing about a falling market, though. It must fall quickly and it must get it over quickly. You know, you don't want it lingering. If it's going to fall, let it fall, and then we can reevaluate. You know, at a lower level. But uh, there's every indication it's going to go back and test at eighteen thousand again. But remember, Wayne, we also did a lot better in South Africa than most markets oh, around the world totally, last yeah. year. So, totally, yeah. So we might still be playing catch up. But even more importantly, we've done better than all overseas markets in the last five years. I mean, our five-year return on our market is still actually quite healthy. You know, it's still up 250, 300, odd, well, not quite 300, 250 percent. Overseas markets, you've got no return for 10 years. Mm. You know, so, so, you mean, it might sound only on a comparative basis, but we must, you know, we're still quite lucky here in South Africa. And I know you look askance at uh, this gold bull sitting on this side of the microphone, but I think today with the Kruger the going only thing, 10, and going through 10,000 rand, you, you've got to believe there's a, the, there's a case the for gold. The only problem with being a gold bull in this environment is that, when things normalize, and I use the word when intentionally, I just don't know the timing, but when things normalize, the one commodity that is going to come under major pressure downwards is gold. Eh? Because the moment things normalize, then this safe haven status comes out of gold, and that's what worries me. I mean, gold could fall, I know this sounds almost, uh, almost blasphemy, but I mean, gold could fall 300, 400, 
I just um, dollars. I just don't know if it's 2010, 29, or 2012 when it's going mm -hmm. to fall. And I don't know if it's going to go to 1,500 or 2,000 or 3,000. Wherever. Mm -hmm. But right now in this environment, if you've got the gold shares, you are a very lucky person.